Hello, and welcome back to the Argyle CISO Leadership Forum. My name is Brittany Sullivan with Argyle, and it's great to have everyone joining us today. A couple of notes before I turn things over to our esteemed speaker. To ask questions throughout the session, simply type into the Q&A chat, and we will address your questions at the end of the session. Now, without further delay, I would like to introduce our speaker, Albert Erdog, CISO at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. We are excited to have Albert with us for a keynote titled Strategic Cer Security in 2023 and Beyond. Welcome, Albert, and over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. And I am really excited to be here today with you. I wish I could physically be with you because I generally prefer in-person communication, but I mean, these days it's, it may not be easy task and it's one of the challenges I think we are seeing right now. And, and thank you very much for attending the presentation here. If you have any question uh, after the, the, the presentation, if you have anything in your mind, please let me know and, and you can uh, send me an email or, or uh, connect with me on LinkedIn and, and I'll, I'll be happy to share my, my thoughts and my experience about what we will talk today during my presentation. Let's start with the mandatory graphics uh, that we need to use in almost every security uh, presentation. We are, as you, as you can easily remember, we were using this image uh, in the past, but we used it for a very, very long time. And of course, the, the concepts change and, and our world is quite different because in the past, the, the, our crown, crown jewel was sitting, literally sitting in the center of our organization. And, and it was really possible to maybe create some physical walls around this crown jewel to protect it. And it was maybe uh, relatively easier in those days. However, right now we are in a very different world and uh, in addition to the, to the challenges I'll talk about in, 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 the, in the following uh, slide, we are also right now dealing with the, the business and the organizations or the top management of, of, of any organizations more frequently. In the past, we were just a, maybe the addition to any organization, but right now we are one of the strategic partners or strategic component in any organization. However, when we look from the, the management perspective, uh, we are still seeing as a support activities, not only the, the information security or the cybersecurity, but the, the IT and the information technologies are still seen, seen as, a, as a supporting activity or supporting function of any organization. This graph, you are seeing on, on the screen right now, this graph shows one of the uh, value chain uh, theories or representing the value chain, which is taught in fact in the, most of the business schools, which means your, your boss, the senior management in an organization, they are learning in the business schools that technology or the IT in general is one of the supporting functions, which is not in fact one of the uh, primary activities in any organization. That's why we are seeing a lot of, I think, difficulties. And I'm always saying that in, a CEO can understand, as you can see from, from for example, in this uh, graph, that they understand about logistic operations, marketing sales services but when we when we start talk about anything specifically about security they are saying that uh, i'm not understanding i mean please explain what you are trying to do and sometimes they are just asking that uh are we secure against any ransomware attack this this was maybe the most complicated uh, question we can get from the the senior management i mean this is the perspective from the from the top and we need to be prepared uh, to deal with this perspective, in fact. This should be one of the components in our strategy. The other thing is our world is, is getting complicated every day. There is a concept called VUCA, which means our, our world is right now more volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. 
which means it's not easy to pre predict the future. We are seeing very different kinds of attacks. We are seeing very different kinds of behaviors. The uh, politics in the world is changing, lots of struggles and, and lots of new technologies and methods. And we need to be we need to be dealing with these type of changes, these type of ambiguities, complexity, uncertainty, and volatility. And we need to be prepared as a as a uh, leader in our organizations. Let me show you an exact an example. Uh, what do you see here? This is a, a painting. Uh, a Picasso painting, in fact, uh, but this is a copy of an original painting, which is called Las Maninas by Diego Velázquez, which is one of the other uh, famous painters. This is uh, Picasso's implementation. As you can see, you need to maybe use your imagination, use your uh, experience to, to identify everything, to figure out that this is the exact copy of the image on the right. I mean, if you can see the image on the right, when you look at the image on the left, you have lots of talents, you have lots of <laughs> uh, visibility, in fact, and we need to maybe, we need to uh, work on our, our um, vision, work on, work on our strategies to see the image on the right, uh, just by looking at the image on the left. Strategic management is one of the one of the important topics because strategic management, in fact, helps organizations to achieve their uh, goals, their aims easily, make the necessary plans, use their uh, resources more efficiently and effectively, and there is a. Uh, flow or procedure called the, the, the strategic management framework. And this is one of the examples. Uh, and, and as I said, all these theories, all these frameworks are taught in the management schools and, and your, your, your boss, your CEO, your, your all the other managers, except the IT managers or the officers, uh, they know about the, the, the function of IT or the function of technology and the strategic management uh, process. But I prefer to use the next one. This also shows the, the strategic management process. And uh, there is one of the important components here because the first one unfortunately did not address this component. And it is, uh, can you see the, the bottom right corner of the screen, there is a component called organizational culture and strategy uh, relation, which means when you implement your, your, or when you start to develop your strategy, you also need to think about your organizational culture. Otherwise, you will be uh, literally unsuccessful to implement uh, your strategy. And that's why when you look or search for the, the, the strategy literature, you will read and you will see a lot of unsuccessful implementation, lots of uh, stories about uh, strategies that could not be implemented. And when you look at the, 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 the flow here, it's not possible to bypass the, the, the this component. It's not possible to, uh, let's say, omit this or, or unsee this, this, this component. It is one of the things, one of the steps you need to uh, follow, you need to find a solution. And in fact, you need to show your leadership and perform the necessary changes in your organization. Uh, I also like to talk about zero trust because zero trust is, is a concept generally when we talk, talk to our uh, talk to, to the vendors, they are generally presenting zero trust as a, as a technological solution or technical solution. But to be honest, it is in fact the, the way to implement almost every uh, security fundamentals. We have been 
reading or writing or developing for years when we go back to read the previous documents, previous frameworks, previous standards, you will see the, the very similar uh, controls, very similar similar definitions uh, to, to, to secure our, our environment. But there's a, of course, um, there are some, some uh, official definitions also about the zero stress, but the main purpose is to minimize uh, all, all the risk in our environment. As I said, this is not new. This is uh, maybe called as a more compact and more, more better way of representation of the, of the principles we uh, we can see in, in almost every security standard or security framework. Zero trust architecture is a, why I'm talking about zero trust because um, in order to clearly see the pictures, do you remember the picture I uh, previously showed you? In order to clearly see the, the pictures, we need to uh, implement zero trust. And, and zero trust is an, an, an enterprise cybersecurity plan uh, and and utilizes the the uh, security and security checks in, in almost every uh, checkpoints, every, every workflow access, and and the, and the, the access points. And uh, one of the important uh, or the, the, the almost every resource in 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 the organization. Uh, is accepted as, as the tenets of zero trust. And it's possible to use every resources that we have in, in our organization, not only the, 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 the technical components, but also the, the procedures, processes, and the, the human resources. And it's possible to create a more secure uh, environment. And uh, since the technology is improving very fast, uh, we are, of course, taking advantage each of all, all these improvements and, and developments, but however, the attackers are also uh, taking advantage of these improvements. The AI is helping them, and AI is helping us, but AI also is helping the attackers. And the uh, quantum computing most probably will, most probably will help us, and, and they will start to use. Right now, maybe it's very expensive, but in the near future, they will also start to use. Uh, this type of tech technologies. That's why we cannot say that, yes, you are in the organization. Uh, we already authenticated you and you are free to go and you can use the, the any system we have in our in infrastructure. Uh, as I said, all the data resources, computing services are, are, are uh, resources that we can use and uh, all communication should be secured uh, because uh, these days we are not only dealing with the centralized data, but the, the distributed data and, and, and data can be anywhere in the world, can travel uh, any location in the world. And, and that's why communication links and communication uh, methods should also be uh, secured. When we look at the zero trust networks, we this approach sorry about the automated uh, changes. <laughs> I'm trying to stop it, but we, when we look at the, the zero trust networks, zero trust networks generally consider everything implicitly uh, untrusted, and that's why we need to, or the, every system should be designed to. Uh, implement some additional controls and then additional. Things. The major point here is zero trust is not only a technology, it is a way of doing business. It is in fact a, a cultural change. It is a, a philosophy in fact. That's why it's not impossible to implement zero trust just by implementing a single technology from a single vendor or, or something like that. And this will also impact everything. And that's why, for example, uh, Zero Trust will help us to 
uh, integrate security into almost every uh, organizational process and organizational uh, procedures. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will not be easy to secure any environment. When we when we talk about the zero trust in any organization, we are seeing a lot of speed bumps. One of the the, the uh, argument we are generally seeing is 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 about trust. When you mentioned, for example, zero trust. You may hear from your employers, your your, your employees, or your your colleagues, and you don't trust us anymore. We are part of this organization. How can you say this? I mean, you can do not do that. Unfortunately, the the name is is not a fortunate name. Unfortunately, yes, and but it's. Maybe not a good name. Maybe we need to find another name, or instead of using just zero trust, we can start to implement the philosophy. Just not not, not mentioning the uh, name. And the other thing is, of course, every people, every human being, every organization, and has have a resistance to change. If you try to change anything, which in fact we are doing all the time because as the security professionals we are always trying to change something we are trying to change behavior we are trying to change some of the technologies we are trying to change the the culture and the way of thinking in an organization these are these are very very huge speed bumps in fact uh cost is another issue and uh just thinking from the technology perspective uh, will not end up a successful implementation or, or successfully securing in, in an organization. As a security professional, when we think about implementing uh, security controls or increasing the security posture in our organization, we cannot only think about technology, but we also need to think about organizational structures, politics, specifically communication. Uh, I'm sure that all of you, or maybe some of you heard heard about something, at least about Peter Drucker. He is one of the uh, management gurus. This is one of his words, culture is strategy for breakfast. But there is there are some additions. If you are not prepared, you need to be prepared to implement your strategy in your organization. Otherwise, the organizational culture, sometimes the, the personal culture definitely lead you in an, in an unsuccessful uh, path. This graph shows the uh, DOD's zero trust implementation strategy. There's, for example, another interesting Think here, when we look at the first step here, they realize that yes, culture is important and they put the culture in the first place, zero trust cultural adoption. It is really important. Otherwise, maybe because as I said, this is not a technology. This is in fact a philosophy, a, a, a change in our life, change in our mind, change in our way of thinking. That's why we need to we need to start with the culture. We need to start with, with the, uh, changing the culture, changing the behavior in our organization. And, and at this point, uh, as the security professionals uh, with the very strong technical backgrounds, uh, we may not be very good at uh, using some of the the skills. Most of the time, the, the other leaders can use, but uh, I prefer using um, analogies, specifically the, the analogies between cybersecurity or information security and, and the, the physical security. And I think airport security is one of the good models that we can use because I generally use this, this example. When we look at the airport security, first of all, we will see some layered approach and and, and uh, most of the airports in the US doesn't have, for example, a security control at the, the very first 
enters to the terminal. But in some some other airports in 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 the in the world, they have layer securities. You need to get pass through the uh, secure physical security controls. You need to get your boarding pass. You need to get a, a passport control, maybe. And and again, if you want to, for example, uh, board the airplane, you need to scan your your boarding pass, which means you need to show that yes, you are authorized to. Uh, or to the uh, port to the plane and it's also this model is also valid for the uh, airline workers for example can you imagine that imagine a pilot i pass through the security controls i am in the the, the fly zone right now in the terminal and since i am working let's say delta or united or whatever the, the southwest whatever the airline is and uh I'm a pilot. I'm authorized to fly an airplane, and I choose one of them because today I like to go to San Francisco, and I'll take the San Francisco plane, or I like to take the New York flight, and I go to the gate and take the airplane and fly to New York. Can you imagine that? But in general, in the, in the expectation in most of the organizations, specifically in the higher ed, Everybody expects that they can uh, reach any any resources in the in the uh, IT environment or on, or in the in the organization. But when we look at, for example, the security features, even the pilots have boarding passes. They need to check the security controls. They also need to have their own boarding pass. And in order to fly the airplane, they also need to maybe scan the boarding pass and uh, get the authorization. And, and I think this is, uh, I think, a good example, and I'm sure that you can also uh, use. In addition to that, uh, airline industry has a very robust and detailed visualization and monitoring uh, capabilities and features. They are using a continuous uh, data collection analysis and monitoring systems, which most of the time we don't have, and we also need to increase our visibility and uh, monitoring systems. Leadership is, is the way to implement all these changes because we need to see the show our leadership and, and it is not comes with the, the technical skills, unfortunately, we need to improve our uh, leadership capabilities, and I think the strategic leadership is one of the way to implement all these uh, changes in our organization. Because uh, strategic leadership, in fact, enables all the team members in an organization to feed the leaders, uh, help them to make uh, take uh, make decisions which the 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 uh, possible impact with the, with the good results at the end. Uh, and from the strategic leadership perspective, the one of the most important uh, tasks maybe we need to, to create is, is creating a very effective communication links in the organization and create trust. We need to coordinate the activities. And uh, uh, as I said, we need to just guide our teams and help them to uh, make uh, very important decisions. This is a theory and these graphs in fact show uh, the details about the, the strategic leadership framework. There are different kinds of uh, two parts of in fact uh, skills that we can use. One of them is strategic thinking while we are performing our, our task and defining our strategies. We need to think strategically first, and then we need to execute strategically. And these uh, components define these strategies. And uh, this graph shows all the components of, of strategic uh, leadership framework, because in order to implement uh, or use strategic leadership uh, skills in our organization. We need to be good at managing. We need to be good at transforming our uh, organization. And we need to create strong bonds with all the uh, stakeholders in the organization and uh, create 
bridges, which means create very clear links of communication in, in any organization. And we also need to be uh, good at bartering. I mean, we need to be good at negotiating our requests to understand their request, and we need to find the best way which is aligned with the, the organizational uh, strategies also. Uh, the other tool that we can use is the strategic alignment maturity model. And as you can see, the first component in the, the, the this model is, is communication. Uh, we need to develop some, some communication channels to help business to understand what we are doing, what we are trying to do. And we also need to uh, create communication channels to understand what they are doing, what's their expectation. Because if we don't have very clear, open communication channels between the business units and the, the IT or security in general, uh, it's not possible to understand that it's not possible to align the strategies and we will end up with maybe some struggles, some, uh, I can say, un ineffective uh, procedures and protocols. We need to improve our competencies, our values. Uh, governance is one of the other tools that we need to focus on. Partnership is very important. Uh, we need to be uh, create partnership with the, the business units and they I hope that they can see us as a as a business partner uh, because security uh, departments are right now enablers and and our architecture of course should align with the, the expectation one of the challenges I am always seeing is of course the security teams are doing trying to do their best but uh, sometimes, uh, the best from the security perf perspective may not be the best from the business perspective. And as a as a as a manager as a leader, we need to develop a balance between the, the business expectation and the, the, the technical expectations, and, and improving the skills are also uh, very important. Uh, you can you can definitely uh, measure your um, maturity. Uh, and you can see at what level right now, uh, at what measure level you are right now. And this is end of my presentation. And uh, I'll be able to share my presentation because I know that I uh, fast forwarded some of the <laughs> information here and I'll, lo I'll love to share all the information. And uh, I'm sure that my, my presentation will be uh, shared in PDF form. And if I think we have a couple of minutes, and if you have any question, I'll be happy to answer your question. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Albert, for such an insightful presentation. We did have a few questions come through. It looks like we have time to address at least a couple. Okay. Um, this one question asks, what are your thoughts on the cloud and moving everything there to have one secure and central location? If it's your business strategy, if you are aligning with the business expectation, of course you sh you should do that. I mean, but but it's I think kind of not. The thing is that in general we are leading change, as an IT or the, as part of the IT. This this is I think one of the things we are continuously doing, and we are always leading the change. Of course, we need to show the possibilities. To the business, but sometimes uh, we can think that yes, this is the best way. But sometimes business may think that no, it's, this is not best way. We need to create a, a communication channel. We need to discuss. For example, a couple of weeks ago, I saw a news about X, the, the Twitter. They moved, I think, all the cloud-based systems to on-premise systems. And the news was saying that they saved a lot and they were quite happy about that. It is interesting because everybody was trying to uh, move everything to the cloud. And yes, the I'm I'm uh, I am very 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 uh, technology vendor agnostic because at the end of the day, the most important thing is how you can use this technology. 
I was that's why I am I'm generally trying to create analogies. For for example, I I love to watch a Formula One races, and I was a fan of Michael Schumacher. There was a, a very famous driver, uh, and he was driving one brand of car, and Ferrari, in fact, imported that. I mean, hired him, and Ferrari was very, at, at that time a very 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 bad car and he starts to drive without making any change the car was the same but the driver was different and he won at least five races in a season in the previous season ferrari could not even finish some of the races and with the, with the michael schumacher in the first season they won five races. I mean, choose whatever you like to choose. Discuss with your business partners. If this is the best way to perform your business, go with that. I'm sure that you can find the best way to secure it. You can find the best way to maybe use it. But the I think the most important thing is is, is to create the, the communication challenge, uh, channel uh, create a trust with the business partners and discuss all the details with them. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Albert. That is all the time we have for questions, but we will be sure to send you any of the questions we did not get to. Yes, so please. If you have any question, you, you are seeing my email address on the screen and please don't hesitate to send me your, your questions. I'll be happy to uh, answer any question. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you again for such a great presentation. And thank you everyone who joined us for this incredible session. This session, along with all of today's content, will be made available on demand following this event. Thank you again, Albert. Thank you.